Hey guys, what's going on? I am super excited for this. Francesco from the Keep Productive YouTube channel got in touch with me and uh, we decided to do a collaboration video. So I did a video for his channel talking about my iPad setup, the apps and the hardware and stuff that I'm currently using right now. And then he did a video for my channel talking about the basics of Notion. Notion has been an app that I've kind of been curious about. It's this sort of advanced note-taking application. It's very interesting. Um, I've just never wrapped my head around it, and I've you know I've been so stuck with drafts right now. I haven't really got to it, so I'm really excited he did this video and actually really piqued my interest about it. Um, he has a couple more videos about it too, so I'll make sure I link all of that stuff, his channel, and those other videos below. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to Francesco for making this video and letting me on to his channel. I'm very excited about this. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's get into the video. Hello there everyone. My name is Francesco D'Alessio. I run a YouTube channel over on YouTube called Keep Productive. Uh, what we do on this YouTube channel is we are dedicated to reviewing productivity applications much like Christopher here on the channel. Now, I first actually discovered Christopher through his agenda video, and in today's video, I'm gonna be diving into an application that's being popular in the space at the moment called Notion. So I'm gonna give you a sort of a beginner's overview of it. We're gonna dive into the resource and see whether it's for you. So hopefully it can give you some great insights there. Now, Christopher's doing a video over on my channel, so you feel free to come over to my channel, subscribe, and see all of the videos there. So guys, without further ado, a huge thank you to Christopher for having me here on his channel with his lovely community. Let's dive into Notion. So here we are inside of Notion. And what I wanna to do today is run over the basic concept of Notion and how you can sort of get a good idea of how to use the application. Now I'm going to scare you a little. This is my account. I've been using it for a year and a bit now. So it might look a bit daunting because when you see a fully fledged setup like this, you might be like, ah, I'm freaking out. Uh, how do I even get to that state? Uh, don't worry, we all will be explained. And I've also done a video too on my channel uh, about my Notion setup. So maybe that will dive into some of those unanswered questions. But for those beginners out there, the Notion experience is really simple. Um, I would say that once you understand it, you can go a long way. So as you can see, this is my Notion account. Now you have to think of Notion as a modular software. So it's basically a website to some extent. So for example, imagine you're building your website for the first time and uh, you're creating your own little elements, you're linking to pages, you're you know coloring the back background. There's really unlimited amount of exploration here. So you're probably wondering, how do I start my first page? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a page just down in the bottom here. So it's really simple. So as you can see, it is very similar to website here. And if I press the slash button and I type in page, page will appear. And as you can see, you get entered uh, into this sort of page view and that's fantastic. So there are obviously some basic page setups like default page, empty page, or you can even import Word, Markdown or HTML. Now you can even start a page like a database page that can be used for a table, even a board or a calendar. So there are quite useful productivity setups here. But one of the best starting points for a lot of beginners is templates. Templates is essentially a place where you can plot out uh, pre-created templates that you can use. Now, if you wanted to, and you wanted to have a homepage like me, you could go onto the team home or the personal home, which would help you to set up uh, some of your first entrance page. Now, if you had a specific activity that you wanted to get started with, you could use something like the tasks and projects area to plot out some of your tasks or even do uh, a roadmap that is planning ahead, or even a weekly agenda, or absolutely anything. Now, there are a host of other options in here, like database and spreadsheet information, lightweight CRM, reading list, fundraising, da fundraising database, recruiting pipeline, and even the ability to create quick notes, design specs, coding guidelines, and vi vision and mission. So there's actually a lot that you can do. So in this case, we're just gonna start with the personal homepage. And it, to activate this template, all you have to do is click use this template. Now, it's a great starting point. As you create that account, all of these dummy pages comes in. And think of it like a, I guess like a mole. Um, when you're digging, you are able to create new tunnels. And this is very similar. So once you've created a page, you can create a page within a page. It's not like Inception. It's very much like a website. Once you create a page within the page, you can access it. So for example, here you can see daily. 
Okay, so there's a movie lift recommendation. And of course you can use it for however you want. But as you can see, movies I want to watch and movies I've watched. And as you can see, it's really easy to go into that and use it. So you're probably wondering, how do I even get to that? How do I create that page? So it's really simple. All you have to do is remember, type in page. As you can see, a page comes up as an option. And if I were to create an empty page for a demonstration, let's say I wanted to create a brand new reading list. So if I type in reading list, you see reading list pops up there. You can add something called an icon, which is quite nice. So in this case, it got me a printer, but I'm just gonna type in book into the emoji section. And this is a nice way to start off your page. Now I can add a cover as well. And what the cover will do is it'll bring up one of the pre-suggested ones, which you can change from the top right hand corner. So if I did a really simple one or even upload my own, I could do so. Now this is where the fun part comes in. You can start modifying your actual reading list and you can do that so easily. So for example, if I wanted to choose a table or even let's say in this case, a board, I'd just type in board in line because I wouldn't want the full page to be taken up by the board and the actual board would appear here. So for example, let's call this um, the next books to read. And as you can see here, um, I've got a board ready to go, but I want to create a sort of uh, sort of status. So these are the recommendations. These are the books I'm reading. And these are the finished books. So for example, if I wanted to get rid of this section now, because I don't use it, I can click hide. And then I can start adding some recommendations here. So I can put maybe pride and prejudice. or even like, uh, I don't know, maps of meaning, or even like sprint. So you can see here that I've got a few books on the go. Now, as you can see, these two are nonfiction and this one is fiction. So if I wanted to, I could go inside and add different properties. You can add properties to a different area. And as you can see, you can even assign it to people, which is very easy to do. In this case, I wanted to add some tags of nonfiction and fiction. So for example, uh, all I would do there is I'd put tags, type in non-fiction. Actually, this one's fiction, isn't it? There you go, fiction has been added. And if I wanted to see that tag appear, I can quite easily do so by going over to the filtered and properties area to see the tags here. So you can here see here that the fictions come up and I go into tags and I type in non-fiction and that appears too. I'm gonna to do that for the final one, but you're starting to see that it's a pretty open experience. Now, the amazing thing about tables, boards, and calendar is that you can go into certain areas. So for example, let's say I'm moving this one to currently reading. If I wanted to add a few notes on this, I could start typing away. And that is actually created as a page now. So for example, if I wanted to put a subheader, I could easily do so, and put a divider, and start typing away using a bullet point. This book was a great read. Obviously I wouldn't put that in the notes. And you can see here that it has become a page. If I clicked in, I could see all the details and I can even add an icon or a cover. But this is a great way in case you want to read notes or add extended details. Now going back to this personal home, of course you can move that about and you can actually put that at the top of the list. And once you click in, everything is left where it left off. Now, for example, there's a couple of demos here that they've created for you. So life, 2018 goals, you could start listing them out. Travel plans, they've created a few travel plans for you to get started. So for example, you could start adding things to do and notes for your trip to Spain, Brazil, and Portugal. Actually, Brazil and Italy. Not, wait, Spain, Portugal, and Italy. <laughs> so as you can see, it's a real easy experience to get on with. Now, let me show you a few of the, some of the ways that I use it. I use it for reading. I use it for tallying what we need to pay for the mortgage, car, savings, client, YouTube, podcast, Skillshare, website, travel, and even boxing. And as you can see, over time, you can build up your account. It's really easy to get started with. Now, let me show you a few of the demonstrations of what you can do when you're creating. So you can do anything from creating text to pages, to-do to lists, headers, even the subheader bullets, uh, number checklist, toggles, quotes, dividers, and link to page. 
Now, if I wanted to mention a person, I could, or mention a page, or even set a date and reminder. Now, this is where it gets more advanced. You've got tables, boards, calendars, and a full page of those boards and calendars. You can create a link database. You can even add images, web bookmarks, videos, code, and files. And there's some popular embeddings too that you can use from a range of experiences. Now you can even create a template button too, but that's just getting a bit more advanced. Now I do have a free Skillshare class that is available and I'll make sure that uh, Chris includes it in the description, but it does guide you through your full Notion account. This is more of a beginner's guide to it, so hopefully it gave you everything you need to get started. Anyway guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like this video, uh, subscribe to Chris if you haven't yet, subscribe to myself over on the Keep Productive YouTube channel, and uh, I'm sure you will be putting up his video very, very soon. Anyway guys, a huge thanks for stopping by today. Make sure to have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.